Hey, welcome to the Seas Life channel. I'm standing right in front of my 12 by 20 lean-to carport that I just got finished building. It took me three days and I was able to do this entire project by myself. So if you're out there wondering if you can do a project like this solo, you can. It's definitely possible. I came up with the design myself. I tried to keep it as simple as possible. All the materials including the metal roofing, wood, screws, everything, $750. Depending on prices in your area, you might be able to do it for the same. I'm gonna take you through very quickly all the wood that I used in this project, give you a quick rundown of everything, so that if you don't wanna to continue to the rest of the video and see how I built it, you'll at least know the materials used. So here we go, I'm gonna bring you in. This is what we're working with. It's nine and a half feet tall on the left side, slanting down to a little over eight feet. It's a two over 12 pitch. I have four six by six posts that were cemented in the ground with about 200 to 250 pounds of cement around each base. The joists on either side are 2 by 10s, 20 foot long. I made corner braces, 2.5 feet long, 45 degree angle in each corner. I have 2 by 6, 10 foot, spaced 2 foot centers all the way across. There's 11 of them up there. And then I have 1x4s laying on top of the 2x6 purlings, as I have come to find out is the real name. Those purlings are also spaced 2 feet apart from left to right. On top of that sits metal tin, 12 feet, 26 gauge. It's a really nice material from a local metal shop. It's even color matched to my house. Everywhere that there's a connection, I have six inch lag screws. I have plenty in both the two by six to the joist and the joist to the post. I actually notch the six by six on all four posts so that it's not mounted flat to the side it's actually sitting on top for extra weight distribution that was a quick overview of how I built it the material is used that's it again it's 12 feet wide and just over 20 feet long. Plenty enough space for one vehicle, a boat, toys, whatever you got. An outdoor lean-to that I did not choose to affix to the side of the house in case I ever wanted to make any changes. I snug that tin right up underneath the eave so that any water coming off the roof will flow down. And that's my carport build. Stay tuned for this next part. I'm going to take you through from the beginning to the end with different clips that I shot along the way. If you like this video, please like, comment, of course subscribe. I have plenty of adventure and other exploration videos that I do on this channel. I hope that y'all enjoy and thank you for watching. Alright, good morning, good morning. Getting started early today with my lean-to carport design. Right behind me right here is the space where it's going to go. And I've talked about it for years and I finally designed a build that is going to be budget friendly and something that I can accomplish by myself mostly. 
So this morning I'm gonna get started with digging my posts, um, the holes for my post, and then I'll be going to pick up all my materials. So stay tuned and you'll see the fun that's about to begin. All right, I got my first hole dug. It took me about 15 to 20 minutes. And as you can see, it is quite large. I dug it two and a half feet. And the purpose of such a large hole is that I can get a lot of cement around the base of this 12 foot six by six. I also found this old end of a broom. You never know what you're gonna dig up sometimes. But that's all the mud, a lot came out. And that six by six is gonna sit right underneath this eave right here. All right, by far the most labor intensive part of this project is done. As you can see behind me, I've got all four holes dug. And man, one of them, it really gave me some trouble. There was a lot of hard clay. You'll see in the time lapse. But I'm so excited that I got the hard part done. And now I'm gonna go grab the trailer, get all my materials, and start building. All right, we just got the metal roof and loaded up on the flatbed, seven 12 foot sheets. It's gonna cover about 21 feet of length for the carport. So let's get moving. All right, picking up the wood now. Shopping at a local lumber yard instead of the typical Home Depot or Lowe's. I think you get some better boards and better prices. All right, I got all my lumber unloaded. So I've got a dozen two by six by tens, which will be the rafters. And then of course I got these new six by sixes, plenty of cement. All right, I just dry fitted some of the six by sixes, trying to get a feel for the distance between the two, the run, which is gonna be just at 10 feet. All right, so I ripped this six by six and a half, I'm using it for two posts, but what I'm doing right here is I'm actually notching where the 2x10 joist is going to sit on top of. This way, I'm not bolting it into the side of the post. It's actually going to be sitting on a ledge for a sturdier support. So I'm going to go ahead and dry fit it. Just make sure I cut it just right, see how it looks. So this is the special sauce right here. That's the 6x6 with it notched out to fit the two by 10 by 20. So it's gonna be a perfect ledge. It's gonna distribute the weight really nicely. All right, I got the first two posts up with my notch outs from the two by 10 by 20. It's gonna sit on top. It's gonna to overhang about a foot and a half over each side. So the middle expanse is gonna be about 17 feet. And I'll probably put some two by six brace underneath it, 45 degree angle cuts, but I've got them cemented in for about two-thirds of the way of the hole about 120 pounds of cement on each right now i'm gonna leave the top a little bit flexible so that when this dries in a couple hours i'm gonna go ahead and put the two by ten up and then adjust it if i need either front or back Getting close to sundown, got about another hour or two. So I'm gonna try and get these last two posts in the ground and set. That was my goal for day one, get the posts in the ground and set. And that way in two days time after the cement dries, I'm gonna come back, 
We'll put the uh, rafters on, the two by sixes, and then metal roof on top. So it's been a pretty good start for day one. Definitely tired, a lot of sun. It'd be nice to have some shade above me to work on projects like these. All right, so I've finished one side completely. Concrete is setting on the other side. It's plumb and the concrete is setting. I just have to move the two by 10 up. I'm taking a day off tomorrow. I'll get back at it on Sunday. Should be able to knock out the rest. This is my progress for one day. I was able to accomplish getting all this done with one person if you know some tips and tricks like I've shown along the way. Check in soon. All right, welcome back to the 12 by 20 carport build. It's been two days since I poured the cement and the foundation is pretty well set. So first I'm going to get some more screws into my roof joist. Um, the 2 by 10 by 20 foot in the post to help secure it. And then I'm going to make a couple of angle cuts as support braces for the corners and then I'll be putting up the two by sixes as my rafters, which that will require a little bit of geometry, figuring out the pitch and the exact angle. It's gonna put my carpentry skills to the test. After that, we're nearly complete. I'll put some probably one by four roof slats on top and then my metal roofing. All right, so I just took measurements of my post height on this side and my post height on this side. And essentially what I'm trying to do is figure out the rise because once I have the rise and then the width in between, I can use an online roof pitch calculator, which is super helpful. And then it will tell me the degree at which I need to cut my two by six rafters. And then I'll be able to measure that angle, cut the board, and hopefully if I did my math right and the calculator works, it'll be the right size. So that's what I'm about to do next. Okay, so I just learned how to use a 90 degree square, so I thought it was worth sharing. But for my pitch, I need nine degrees. So that's the angle that I need to cut these boards to sit flush between the roof joist. So find your pivot point, the end, which is right here. And then there's degrees marking right here. It says degrees zero through 90. So basically you just wanna to go to nine degrees, which is right here. So once the nine is at the base, go ahead, hold it steady, and then make my mark to the corner. And there you have it. That's my nine degree angle that I need to cut. So here's my nine degree angle that I've cut. It's gonna go up here. And then if you come down to the other side, you do the exact same type of cut, nine degree. And this should be the exact length. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it mounted up top. Since I'm hanging these myself, here's a pro tip that I fig figured would work good for me. Is I cut a piece of two by four and just put it below where it's gonna be mounted on each side that way I can get the board up and adjust it as needed without needing a second hand
Well, there she is sitting flush. Hardly any gap at all with a nine degree pitch. Coming down to this side, same thing. Looking good. Now it's just time to move on down the line with two foot centers. All right, before I went any further, I wanted to go ahead and make my corner braces 45 degree angle. It's gonna sit right in between here, just like that, which will give an additional two feet of rafter support on each side. This is a two and a half foot board. I'm gonna go ahead and get this tacked up. Looks good, doesn't it? I'm really figuring out these angled cuts. And this is what happens when you don't measure twice, cut once. My angle should have been this way on this side of the board. As you can see, I've dry fitted some of the tin. I was just trying to get an idea of how it would look. I only have, let me spin you around two more rafters to put up right here and then I'll go ahead and start putting the purlins on and then getting the, the metal roof on so we're nearly there the structure itself is starting to have a lot of rigidity if you're wondering how I attach my rafters I have a six inch lag screw and I have three three and a half inch construction screws and I believe this is more than adequate for just a metal roof load these are those multi-purpose six inch lag screws and then the three and a half inch construction screw next up is the purlins which are the horizontal roof slats and I'm spacing those two feet apart so I'm about to get on top get them spaced evenly and start tacking them down okay as you can see the majority of my purlins are now installed except for the very end. Since I'm working my metal roof starting on this side, I'm gonna start working it down. And that way, when I get to the end, I'll know the exact length and I'll be able to cut those last purlins to fit just right, because I'm sure there's gonna be a little overhang on the metal roofing. There are three foot sections and this is a 20 foot span, so it'll probably hang over about six to eight inches on that side. I'm gonna have it hang over on this side probably about four inches or so to have a drip edge. All right, so just got finished putting all of the metal roofing up. I wanted to do a complete dry fit to see how my ends look, how they're matching up on both sides. Get a feel for the overhang right here. So my purling is gonna need to come out about four inches or so when I make my final cuts. But everything looks pretty good overall. I'm very pleased with how it's gonna look once I get it all tacked down. It's definitely gonna serve the, serve the need. I may have to move that light a little bit. All right, the final piece is going up. We're nearing the end. The 12 by 20 
lean-to carport that I built. It was an awesome project that took me about three days. This is what we have.